Fighting malaria with engineered symbiotic bacteria from vector mosquitoes by Group A8. Malaria infects 300 to 500 million and kills 1.2 million people every year. In an effort to eliminate this risk to people all over the world, a team of scientists edited the genome of the mosquito to excrete a protein in its gut to kill malaria. While this worked, in order for it to be a permanent solution to malaria, the mosquito would have to be selected over normal mosquitoes, and the change would happen over a long enough time span that the malaria protist might evolve a countermeasure. Instead, they edited the DNA of P. agglomerans, a symbiotic bacteria that live in the gut of mosquitoes. The genetically altered bacteria would then produce a malaria-killing protein. The mosquitoes could be baited to take the bacteria, which would eventually spread in the population, hopefully reducing the number of malaria cases and deaths. P. agglomerans, uh, bacteria, uh, is widespread in the mid gut of the mosquito. Therefore, uh, it was mixed with a plasmid of green fluorescent proteins so that it could be traced through the mid gut. And uh, intervals of dissection showed that uh, the bacteria increases 200 fold after being injected into the mosquito uh, through a sugar meal. After two days, uh, it maxed and then back to pre-existing levels of about initial uh, and CFUs. Uh, the code vector was released from the bacterium through a hemolysin B and hemolysin D inner membrane and a toll C outer membrane. And uh, it was an active transport that uh, was by the chemolysin A sig uh, secretion signaler that was genetically altered to be on the effector DNA molecule. Uh, here are... Uh, is that the right point? Could you... Oh, was it for... for no, I'm sorry. Well, you double click, I'm sorry. These are the effector molecules, the various ones that were tested uh, to see was the most effective in passing through the, uh, the membrane of the bacteria. There were two 12AA SM1 peptides and MPLA2, uh, a PBS21 SCV sheep one is what it was named, a chipinase propeptide, and SHIP-1 alone, a scorp uh, scorpine, an annularia lytic peptide, and EPIP sub-4 plasminogen and a fusion of the plasminogen and the propeptide. Here are the results of the passage through the bacterial wall. Uh, as you can see, the EPIP sub 4 plasminogen uh, got through it most effectively and was found in the greatest amount outside of the bacteria and in the mid gut. Um, recombinant P. agglomerans have been known to affect the development of the parasite P. falciparum in mosquitoes by secreting a, pro a propeptide that inhibits plasmodium chitinase activity and thus results in less eucinx formation. Um, to test this, P. agglomerans were administered to mosquitoes via cotton pads soaked in bacteria in a 5% sucrose solution. 32 hours later, these mosquitoes were given a blood meal that was infected with the P. falciparum um, bacteria. Lucid numbers were counted eight days later after the blood meal to determine the success of parasitic growth in the mosquitoes. Um, the initial experiments were tested the effectiveness of P. agglomerans that secrete a, kin a kinase propeptide. Um, the P. agglomerans then expressing the propeptide were effective in inhibiting parasite growth up to 59% in infected mosquitoes. Um, next, the inhibitory capability of various strains of P. agglomerans needed to be tested. Um, P. agglomerans strains expressing the NPLA2, the pro EPIP, SHIVA, and SHIVA1 expressed an inhibitory rate of 85%, 87%, and 94%. Um, P. agglomerans expressing the scorpion or EPIP4 had the highest with a 98% inhibition rate. Um, importantly, from this information, in the 90% of mosquitoes that contained at least one oocyst after the initial blood meal, um, the addition of scorpion expressing P. agglomerans dropped this percentage to 
14%, showing an 84% transmission blocking potential. Um, the persistence of the inhibitory effect on usage growth also needed to be tested. To do this, mosquitoes that were fed on the same batch of infected blood meal were tested after two and four days. Um, the inhibition was similar at both time points. So the inhibitory effect of the bacteria on usage production lasts for at least four days after the bacteria is administered to the mosquitoes. Um, the graph on the left shows the usage numbers in different strains of preagglomerins two days after infestation. And the graph on the right compares the usage number and mosquitoes after like compares the control to mosquitoes treated with preagglomerins both two and four days after the initial infection. Okay, um, the effectiveness of preagglomerins on rodent malaria also needs to be established through experimentation. Um, to do this, mosquitoes harboring various strains of preagglomerins were allowed to feed on the same mouse infected with P. burgae. Um, Usus numbers in the mosquitoes were then counted 14 days after the initial bacterial administration. Um, Pagelomerins expressing SM12 reduced usage counts by 68%, and a mixture of bacteria expressing PDS21, SC, FB, SHIBA1, and EPIP4 reduced usage counts by 79%. Um, a mixture of bacteria expressing scorpene and EPIP4 reduced usage numbers was the greatest by reducing them by 83%. Okay. <coughs> For the future of malaria prevention techniques, it is very important to establish a recombinant bacteria that is effective but also has minimal cost to the fitness and longevity of the lifespan of mosquitoes. Um, to staff, examine whether pagglomerins affect the mosquito's lifespan, mosquitoes were fed either a sugar or a various strain of pagglomerins, and then 32 hours later the same mosquitoes fed on a non-infected mouse, and then their, the mortality rate was tested twice a day from then on out. Um, no significant difference in mosquito lifespan was seen among the data cl collected in the different mosquito groups. So this suggests that the recombinant bacteria tested here have no negative impact on the mosquito in any way other than their capability to host plasmodium usins. And then the graph on the right compares the control group to the different strains of P. agglomerans during this experiment and they're very similar. So. so, points of discussion. So in this lab, it's important to note that other methods were already tried, such as insecticides, uh, things that would kill off mosquitoes or kill off plasmodium inside the mosquito's meat gut. But these were prone to failure due to resistances forming in the, um, in the protist's population. So using the bacteria, which gets spread rapidly by flower pollen, uh, among other things, is an effective way to combat it because they will develop a way to block oocyst formation and malaria spreading fast enough that they will be able to evolve an effective countermeasure, theoretically. Uh, multiple different effector proteins were used, which also offers a countermeasure in that there is more than one fallback contingency plan, if you will, for oocyst uh, development of oocyst block and other such things. And mosquito species does not appear to affect the effectiveness of any of these effector proteins whatsoever. So it looks to be highly adaptable to any species of mosquito that harbors these genetically modified bacteria in their midguts to prevent them from spreading malaria to any species. Uh, these methods are paving the way for scientists to combat malaria and other transmutable lethal diseases effectively and potentially even eradicate them.